Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. The 2024 NFL Draft officially in the books. That means it is time to grade what the Cowboys did. Knowing undrafted free agency here to come, the Cowboys will probably have some nice success on that, but that's tomorrow's video. First, a recap of the picks made. Part of a trade down, Tyler Guyton to the Cowboys, the soon-to-be left tackle. He says he's more comfortable there, by the way. Out of Oklahoma, round one, pick number 29 overall. That was very expected. Bit of a surprise in round two, pick number 56, Marshawn Neeland, the edge out of Western Michigan. That is your long-term, most likely, tank Lawrence replacement. He can help stop the run. You don't have guys that can do that right now, especially at defensive end on this roster beyond tank. My favorite pick, Cooper Beebe, who was a top 42 player, 41st overall for me on the board, out of Kansas State. That was round three, pick number 73. Oh, I love that selection. Two starters along the offensive line. Then the one that I think most people have more interest with, it was the outlier relative to the consensus draft board. Uh, the pick that you regret maybe not getting a running back uh, with potentially. Maurice Leofau out of Notre Dame. That was pick number 87 overall. Uh, clearly Cowboys much higher on him than myself and most people were. Round five, I love the value. And we'll talk about the whole running back debacle in a little bit here. Round five, pick number 174, Kalen Carson out of Wake Forest. I think is a good Mike Zimmer type of corner. Corner was an underrated need because you had needs everywhere there. That's 174 for Dallas. Ryan Flournoy, the wide receiver out of Southeast Missouri State. Simo, the rare small school pick. FCS by the, I think it's FCS or D2, whatever it is, by the Dallas Cowboys. There's no speed at receiver. Flournoy actually has that. The seventh rounders, we didn't do cuts for those guys. We'll spend some more time on them today. Nathan Thomas was 185 overall on my board. was my best available offensive tackle. Cowboys triple dip on the offensive line uh, as they look for some help after a, a pretty rough go uh, in terms of the offensive line play this past year, especially some key pieces there. Uh, 185 for me, 233 for the Cowboys. And then they did get another run-stopping nose guard. Justin Rogers, fatties only, rides again. 270 overall. He was my second best available nose guard left. Not surprised he was drafted there. Big addition, uh, literally, for the Cowboys there in round seven. So my grade's still a B-. minus. And if you had taken Jalen Wright over Maurice Leofau, I'd have been feeling pretty good right now. But man, I think your biggest need was running back, and you got none of those guys? You're, you're going to ride with Rico Dowdle and... and Reduce Vaughn and, and Leek Davis and Royce Freeman and we assume Zeke Elliott. I, mm, that's dicey. But the individual picks, for the most part, I did like. So grade the Cowboys 2024 NFL Draft Class. A, B, C, D, or F. Go ahead and sound off for me at the pin comment of today's video. Especially if the ad comes here on YouTube. Tyler Guyton, the pick in round one. He was 30th overall on my board he was 29th pick for the Cowboys. I, I didn't love the value once you got outside the top like 27-ish picks, and I would have loved Graham Barton. You have traded down. You got extra assets. That helps your overall grade there. He's raw. He's not inexperienced. He's raw. Well, he's inexperienced too, but, he, but he's raw. He says he's more comfortable on the left side of the offensive line. The Cowboys knew that they desperately wanted a left tackle. I'm not – we'll see if he ever was the actual top player on the board uh, at that particular time, but Guyton was a need. Fills a need. The upside is that he can become a top three tackle from this loaded class. But there is development to be done. The bright side is, historically speaking, this team tends to do a pretty good job of maximizing offensive line picks specifically in the first round. So of all the spots I trust them, and I've been very negative this offseason, tackle round one I tend to trust them with. Now, if you have not already hit that sub button here on the Cowboys report, 188K is the next goal. 187 is the new number. A lot of new people, I guarantee, watching this video. Hit that sub button so you don't miss out. UDFA is coming to you guys tomorrow. For the edge rusher, Marshawn Neeland, who I was a little bit lower on than the consensus. You know, Dane Brewer had him as a top 32 overall player. Split the difference uh, between Dan and I here for this pick. You don't have good run stoppers at the edge rusher spot. You have Tank Lawrence. He's great. 
Micah's not a great run stopper at this time. That's okay. He's still perfect pass rusher. It's fine. Sam Williams has growth to do. Junior Fajoko is didn't do anything at all last season. So adding, I think, a Tank Lawrence type of player in Marshawn Neeland in terms of being able to be a run stopper is intriguing. He's a good athlete, really good athlete. So the hope is there's more upside as a pass rusher. The problem is he hasn't produced as a pass rusher. Um, he had a great performance against Eastern Michigan, had three and a half, I think it was three and a half sacks in that game, or three sacks, whatever it was, and then had like one or one and a half the rest of the season. I need more of that dominance. That's why I was a bit lower on him. So the, the Eastern Michigan game showed what he can be. Where was the rest of that over the course of the season is, is my, my main question mark there. Today's show is made possible by Mando. Spring into the season with a deodorant that can handle the heat. Mando is clinically proven to work hard all day. Instead of covering BO with heavy fragrances, Mando stops odor at the source, stopping the stink from happening before it even gets going in the first place. Created by a doctor, Mando whole body deodorant is powerful enough for the toughest body odor, but gentle in terms of being able to use on your, uh, your old family jewels. Mando's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like the mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping, by the way. There's also a discount code for you guys to get hooked, and it saves $5 off the starter pack, which is equivalent to over 40% off. 40% off with code CHAT, C-H-A-T, over at shopmando.com. That's S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O, shopmando.com. It is skin safe, and it is based in science as well. Links in the comment section and the description of today's show. Go to round three, Cooper Beebe, the guard, who will be a center for the Dallas Cowboys. So look, there is position change involved here. Beebe did get practice reps at center at Kansas State. His arm length probably makes him a pretty good option there at center. Uh, I had him 41st on my board relative to value. It's one of my favorite picks in the draft, straight up. You got him at 41 versus 73 in the top. That's really rare value in terms of how my board typically ends up playing out there. So I love that pick. He is a powerful downhill run blocker. I think especially with BB coming in, maybe not week one, but as the year goes on, I think the ability to have a better ground game from a blocking perspective, talk about the players and the scheme, the scheme I still don't love that much. I think the run blockers up front, if Guyton can develop into what I think he can be, has the ability to be much better than what it was in previous seasons, especially this past year, by the way. 14 picks later, Reese Leofau out of Notre Dame. I have talked to people outside of the Cowboys organization that are in the NFL that I know uh, were much higher on him than me. I was pretty similar to the consensus board. He was in the 180s on that. I had him at 200. Um, I know some guys that had him in the fourth, that had him you know, fringe top 100. I'm not mad about passing on Peyton Wilson. That's medical. That's not a big deal for me. I, I just didn't see splash impact plays. I think he's a good Mike Zimmer fit. Um, I think there's some good coverage stuff involved there. I hope Mike Zimmer's got this one right. I hope this is more like, ah, you know, I, I wasn't as high relative to the Cowboys pick on Osa Odigizua. Also a third-round pick. I liked him, but not, again, it was a half-round round early there. And this is not a Nashawn Wright 2.0 pick. That's my, that's my goal uh, from that perspective. This ends up being not a, uh, not a disaster uh, from the Cowboys' perspective. I hope that ends up being... Of a better outcome for the Cowboys. So grade that Cowboys draft class for me. A, B, C, D, or F. If you haven't already, please do so for me in the comments section. I want to see the comments flooded today. That's why we're asking it twice of you guys on today's show as we move forward here to some of the day three selections uh, out of the Dallas Cowboys. A, B, C, D, or F. Get those comments in for me in the comments section. Kalen Carson, Wake Forest. Again, the lack of a running back I know kind of rears its ugly head these last two picks there. I liked Kalen Carson, though. Uh, 137 overall on my board. He's 174. I thought I was going to be lower than, uh, than where he ended up going because I got questions if he's top-end speed enough to play some good man, but he's high football IQ guy. I think that will fit Mike Zimmer really well. I want to see more ball skill, more production from that, uh, from that angle, but Willing tackler. There is some special teams value. I don't believe in Deshaun Wright. It's a new regime. We'll see how they feel about Eric Scott. 
corner was a need. Because one guy goes down, you're in trouble again. I think Carson in the fifth, I bet they had at least a fourth round grade on him, frankly. So I, I do like the the value angle of getting Kale and Carson there. Individual of the pick itself. I, I did like that pick quite a bit. Who was your favorite pick this season for the Dallas Cowboys? In the any round, any pick, maybe it's got it's Cooper BB for me, by the way. But drop that player name for me, your favorite draft pick by the Dallas Cowboys this season. Round six, again, you didn't have as much day three capital as you would have liked. Ryan Flournoy, the Cowboys don't have any speed at wide receiver. CeeDee Lamb is not a burner. Kevontae Turpin is, but he's undersized. Ryan Flournoy is the exact type of receiver I've been looking for this team to add for several years now. He just happens to be the very rare small school player. And a lot of those guys the Cowboys take, by the way. Uh, 235 for me, pick 216. So, again, when we're in, when we're in the day three range, Six-round picks, it's no worse than a C individual grade for me. It's a six-round pick. Who cares? Uh, you're taking shots anyway. The, the, the expectation is low. Almost 6'1", 202, three drops in his career. Or, sorry, four drops. A, a sub-3.5% career drop rate. Big hands, big body, fast. 4'4", four, four, 40 yard dash becomes probably your second fastest wide receiver, barring maybe some UDFAs we'll break down later on this week here. I like the value there. It, it, Brings you a different type of receiver than what this team has. Will he make the roster? Who knows? It's going to be a lot of UDFA competition coming in here for this Cowboys roster as well. Round seven, Nathan Thomas. Uh, all but two of his snaps have come at left tackle. I am interested in maybe putting him inside the guard. Uh, big guy, 6'5", 332. Has sub 34 inch arms, normally a red flag for Dallas. But again, I had a fifth slash sixth round grade on him. He's 185 for me on my board. Powerful player. He's a really good run blocker, especially in zone schemes, which I'd love to run more of in Dallas. Uh, he will hit, he will hit hard. The, the hands are powerful. The testing was good enough at his size. He is not the quickest player, though. And that's why I'm intrigued by a transition inside the guard where I think you can let him use his power a little bit more and helps negate some of the potential lunging issues he tends to run into. Again, I know it's not a running back. I like the Nathan Thomas pick. I was surprised they triple-dipped on the offensive line. I got a good value pick there, though, for me. Justin Rogers out of Auburn. Uh, this His game is summed up like this. It's all about that anchor. He is a powerful player. This is a fatties only pick. Mike Zimmer cares about big defensive lineman, baby. Six two and a half, three twenty two, thirty three 322, 33 inch arms, fantastic length. He doesn't get moved very much in the run game. This is a two gapping nose guard who can take on double teams and not get pushed a lot. He will anchor as a run stopper and he will get anchored as a pass rusher. He, do he doesn't get moved in the run game. And he does not move in the passing game. This is Louis Nix, if you remember him, the uh, former Notre Dame defensive lineman, as a, a run stopper there. He's not a good athlete. He's actually, he's actually a really bad athlete. Uh, but two gapping nose guard, fat goalie theory. Just don't move that much. So my final grade, I'm going to go with the B minus. I, I am very concerned about this running back room for the Dallas Cowboys. It is not in good shape. It is the worst running back room in the NFL. No matter who you sign as a free agent or a UDFA, the Cowboys have not addressed that position. Running backs don't matter, but they still matter a little bit, right? Uh, they don't matter as much as other spots. Maybe someone gets cut. Maybe a trade for somebody coming down the line. In the end, who ends up being RB1 for this Dallas Cowboys football team? It very well might be Zeke Elliott, and I've, I've made my thoughts clear on that, and I'll stop complaining at some point. Hit that sub button and tell me who you got as RB1 for the Cowboys.